Hello, lovely people, and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. I hope you're doing wonderfully well wherever you are on this gorgeous planet of ours. I'm in a good mood today because the sun came out after the rain, which is rather nice. I, I, I wanted the rain to come because um, I've just um, started building, uh, Abigail, my wife, uh, I've started building her a, a potting shed. Uh, I, I will take some of the space, my tools, but, but it's going to be mostly her potting shed. And um, I, I love building things. Um, and it's lovely building things for my wife. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I wanted the rain so that the concrete floor would set properly. So, um, yeah, so I'm quite happy about all, all of that. Uh, you didn't need to know any of that. Um, yes, Yoga Solutions. Um, yeah, sorry it's a bit late this week. Um, I, I, I've been busy building. Um, that, that's what I've been doing this week. So, um, but it occurred to me, maybe Friday is a good day to put it out there because um, then people, then you might have the chance to play with it at the weekend if you, if you, if you have a um, weekday job. And um, let me know in the comments if, if uh, Friday is an okay day for me to put out my yoga solutions. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, let's get on with the content. So, um, what to share today? I, I think it's uh, yoga can become incredibly complicated uh, depending on how you how you're looking at it. If you're, especially if you're, if you're a teacher trying to work it out, it can be um, quite an, uh, quite a complicated thing. Um, yeah, uh, and and we look we look in order to understand the thing, we we look in various directions that kind of go with understanding on an intellectual level. So we we look at the anatomy model, so we can um, I don't know work out how the body moves from from that particular perspective. Um, and it's an okay model, but it, it's not how the body works. It's, it's, that's how the, that's how it might be how muscles engage. And, you know, you can have information about what muscles tend to group together, but it, it doesn't really inform you about um, actual real live movement. Because the, the reality is, if you want to move an arm, for example, there are a million and one ways of doing that. And the thing that determines how you do that isn't the anatomy. Well, uh, I mean, it's <laughs> uh, there's certain muscle muscles that are likely to be involved, but it's uh, the thing that you're doing isn't triggering muscles in order to make that movement. What you're doing is intending to move, and the body has worked out ways to to cause that to happen. It's the intention. It's the intention behind it. So, uh, simple example: if you if you uh, lift your arm, I, I've done this before. You lift your arm, hold it there, uh, because you're doing a yoga posture. What are you doing? You're following my instruction. You are holding your arm up in space, so you've got muscles holding on to your arm. Uh, do the same thing, but with the intention of um, catching a falling leaf you will have done, the whole body would have moved completely differently, completely differently, because your intention is different. If you're not entirely sure about that, just try it again. Feel the difference between doing stuff to your body, intending to make your body do something, and intending to do something in reality that would go with your, your desire. You have to evoke some sort of idea, uh, catching a sweet, <laughs> I don't know, whatever works for you. But the, the fact is that you, you can't define um, the body's movements purely with anatomy, because it's a, a range of things, and they might involve similar groups of muscles. But the way that you do that will depend entirely on your intention. Okay. So um, intention is key. Now, I know that when we 
are doing our postures, what uh, the intention shifts around to, uh, I want it to feel nicer in my back, for example, or my hips or my elbows or my whatever. And it's a, it's a bit complicated because then you're um, thinking about how your body works at the same time as experiencing the difficulty of it working in a particular way. So we can get very confused. And this is what I meant by going deep into your yoga it can be a very confusing thing. But if you can get clear about your intention as you practice, then you can get simple with your solutions. What, what is it that I want to achieve with this? And, and this gives me my baseline kind of rule of thumb guide for you that has served me incredibly well and uh, gets me to find ways of doing things that wakes up my body in a very, very healthy manner. And that baseline rule of thumb thing that you can hang your hat on is whatever you're doing, when you're in the thing that you're doing, you kind of want to find a way where your back doesn't have to carry your weight. Whatever shape you're making, whatever position in space you are, you don't want your back to have to brace to carry your weight because that's where, that's where backache comes from. That's where uh, injuries occur, spinal injuries occur is when you're doing that. Okay. What do I mean? Um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it in a very simple thing. And um, I'll take it into a class for my silver members in a bit. But uh, I'll just give you one example um, to show you what, how, how you can think about um, approaching your practice with this one rule of thumb. I don't want my spine to be carrying my weight. Okay. So if you turn, if you do a twist, right, so you turn to the left. Chances are, I just did it, and I expect you will too. You'll pull with the you pull your weight round with the muscles of the lumbar spine. The way you know you've done that is because your your hips will be tight, your groins will pull as well, probably. There'll be a kind of strong restriction in the breath in that moment until you can kind of relax where you are. Um, there's an example. You've, you've pulled your weight round with your spine. It, it's not the end of the world. The spine is meant for movement. It, it, and, but if you, if you want to take that effort out of your spine, it's useful to find another way. And here's a clue. Try doing the same movement where you turn to one side, but this time see if you can do it by drawing the core the, the, the belly, the abdominal cavity, drawing, using your belly muscles to draw that back and then using those belly muscles to kind of pivot you around and it'll be equally restrictive of the breath. But you, you, you might notice you, you're sort of drawing your belly back and then it's the kind of um, the effort of the out breath can help you find it. Those, those crisscross muscles of the abdomen can organize things to turn you. If you do it with the out breath, you might be able to do it with a feeling of leaving your legs behind. If you're letting go of your weight at the same time, because holding your weight up is something that you do, most people do with their back, lower backs, with their lumbers. So get a sense of dropping your weight as you release the breath and then using your core musculature using the purchase of the ground underneath you to turn you. And then when you get there, you relax. Now it's a different set of tensions. If you just pull yourself around, it'll be all the familiar things and your legs will get involved and your groins will get involved. Okay, but if you wanna try something different, draw your core back, release the breath as you use the ground to put you in place. And when you get there, relax. Okay, so there's an example. Uh, have a go on the other side. So make sure you're not holding your weight up with your back. Relax your weight down with the release of the breath and the belly moving back. It's a natural way of releasing the breath. 
and then you should find that there's your your core musculature has kind of purchased with the ground underneath your seat so you can use that to pivot yourself round relaxed in the upper body not lifted and when you get there put your hands down and relax if you do that a few times just the simplest of twists sourced in in uh, your breathing gear the the core musculature involved with the out breath if you do that several times it'll be a fantastic workout for your uh, transverse abdominal muscles if, if you're into that sort of thing but moreover it's teaching your breath to support you as you release it if when you get there if you can again relax your weight and breathe by relaxing your weight you'll find that the belly muscles actually get involved with kind of supporting you where you are as you breathe so the feeling will be the breath the, the breath is in the back of your body along your spine so that's your spine being free to receive the breath and then when you let go again it's just the release of pressure and you'll find that there's a lot of space for movement that you can develop using your core okay that's for the lower back what about for the upper body uh, neck and shoulders is a big issue for people so the just to reiterate the core the core thing your, your belly needs to move back and it kind of draws up but it mustn't lift your chest you need to rest down your, your weight has to go down as your core empties back and up that's the direction of the diaphragm when you release the breath and it's resting the chest down that keeps you from lifting with your lower back okay the other way around when you're wanting to look after your neck and shoulders what it, it's the rib cage the rib cage and the breath and um so try try this instead of using your core or your spine to turn try this have a broad satisfied breath smiley breath breath across the heart and then when you release it send it out with a sigh so that it comes out of your chest you're sighing your chest away from your face so you don't hang down with it and you should find a similar kind of use of the ground underneath you from your chest and the ribs at the side and that can motivate you to turn to one side now if when you do that your belly pushes out then you're back to square one so the the um, the rule at the top end if you want to not carry the weight of your head with your neck not carry the weight of your shoulders with your spine right the rule of thumb is uh, for the upper body to feel nice and long in the neck and throat your chest has to work your ribs have to work but with a caveat that the you don't uh, push out your organs so it's the natural emptying of the breath in the belly kind of needs to go along with it so try this again turn to the left but this time uh, relax have a broad smiley breath across the heart whilst you're in space and then when you sigh the breath out <sighs> use that to turn you and unless you did some pushing of your belly out you, you don't have to hold it in particularly you just need to not push it out and the belly muscles will naturally restrict anyway and you'll find that the rib cage is perfectly capable of using the ground to turn you in space and again you'll have this relaxed base feeling hopefully when you get there you can rest your hands there and relax and you should find that the upper body is a little freer than the neck the throat the shoulders are sitting more comfortably in that in the position try it to the other side relax have a breath wide across the heart that will be relatively empty in the belly anyway there's a breath called seat kari if you if you're a pranayama um uh, aficionado 
Seat Carly, seat. Ka. The chest empties away from the face. You're still relaxed in your back. You're relaxed in your neck. But the ribs and the chest, using the ground for purchase, can turn you. And when you get there, you can relax. Now, when you're there and the chest continues to drop and the belly continues to um, rest back, as you give your weight to the ground in order to breathe, you should find that the chest bearing down um, is how you breathe. The core drawing back is how you breathe. So the result is you get a sense of the breath arriving in your back, but it can also arrive to float your head without you having to hold your chin in or anything like that. Just a feeling of lightness. Even though there's effort from the, your breathing gear, the muscles around the fluid core and the, um, the effort of the rib cage, as you breathe, and what you're doing is you're breathing what you're doing. You're breathing a twist that doesn't rely on, on pulling yourself around with your spine. When you let that breath go, you just let it go inwards. And because of what you've done, your spine should be free to move from the bit between the neck and the lumbars, the thoracic spine. So you get into a deeper sense of rotating directly from the spine. So the spine is working, but now instead of it working to hold your weight up, it's working to move you from behind the heart. And it's the most functional way of rotating. It's also that part of your spine being mobile is imperative if you want to have the released experience of an elongating spine. It's, it's to do with the breath and the thoracic spine. Okay. Um, so, recap. Rules of thumb. You want to stop, if you catch yourself carrying your weight or pulling yourself around with your lumbars or your neck, you want to stop doing that and replace it. <laughs> Instead of carrying your weight or, or pulling yourself around with your lumbars and your neck, you want the breathing gear, the muscles around the fluid core, the soft fluid core, and the rib cage itself, which becomes part of the thoracic spine, to do the work. And the way they work is the abdomen, the, the fluid contents of the abdomen empty back and up with the release of the breath, the chest and the ribs empty down and uh, sort of towards you, inwards. Uh, yeah, down away from your face and shoulders and then and kind of inwards into you. Those two things working together uh, can be hard to do, but if you want to make it simple, you, if you're looking after your back, move your core. If you're looking after your lower back, move your core and relate it, move from there. Use your core to move. If you want to look after your neck, use your rib cage to move. The two should go work together, and if they do work together, then you start moving from the spine be between them, the spine behind the heart, and there's your there's your answer, because when, when you do that, the spine is elongating it. So the cent central axis of your movement and support, uh, the breath is agreeing with what you're doing, as in you, you, you are breathing what you're doing. And also you can release into what you're doing when you let go of the breath, if you manage that. And um, yeah, Bob's your uncle, uh, whatever the posture. And I'm going to do some more postures for my, for my premium members now um, to complete the class. But for um, those of you watching on, on Facebook or YouTube, um, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found some value. Play with it, make it your own. And um, yeah, uh, if you, if you uh, did enjoy that and you want to work with me directly tomorrow, because um, yeah, today's Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, 10.30 uh, a.m. Most Saturdays I do a, a um, two and a half hour workshop, little break in the middle. It's a slow build um, class that's kind of gentle in its approach, and it and it um, it's it, it's a it will include and and refer to whatever is needed by the um, on screen participants. I ask questions, 
about what where you're at and and uh, what you feel you need from practice and whatever theme I'm I'm on uh, will be the answer because uh, all of my themes um, are kind of the same they're, they're, they're different parts of the same jigsaw so uh, and and they're all about um, the most harmonious way that the body can operate okay so uh, come and join me uh, Saturday mornings 10 30 till one o'clock with a little break in the middle um, always very profound and uh, that's, that's how I, I advertise them when I post them out there you know, join me for a profound experience um, you can do that at, uh, most Saturdays if you want to do a yoga retreat with me there's one coming up in the summer in Turkey hosted by um, Tuesday McNeil, uh, she does the mornings and I do afternoon workshops to get everyone into the zone. So um, yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, early, early July, that is. Uh, there's a reference to it on my website. You can, you can um, contact uh, Tuesday McNeil to ask about that. Uh, her email's in the, on my website. And uh, anything else? Locally, I'm doing the World Yoga Festival in August, and you can come and join me for that. All right, my lovelies, uh, that's it for me, uh, from me for this week. And yeah, let me know if Fridays are okay, because I think it suits me better, actually. So um, I may continue with this doing it on Friday. Okay, much love to you all now. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye now.